Hi, everyone. So this is our very last video to close out the year, but we just want to leave you with a couple more tips to keep you healthy through the winter and all year long, but especially in the winter. So today we're just going to go through some of the basic pillars that make up a healthy lifestyle, because these are most important steps for getting healthy. And it seems so simple, but we just want to emphasize how important these things are. So the very first thing is your nutrition. So this is the first place that I start with my patients. We assess their diet and really this is the foundation. I mean, this is going to set the you know foundation for everything else. So if you only do one thing, just one thing, one thing. to improve your health, it's to assess your nutrition and just take an inventory of what you're eating, you know, how many good things are you getting in? How many bad things are you getting in? Not to judge anyone's food choices, but we all probably have an idea like what is a healthy food and what is a more inflammatory food. So typically with my consults, I go through like what is an anti-inflammatory diet. And it basically just means adding foods that reduce inflammation and cutting down on the foods that promote inflammation. So the best way to do this is just, you know, not like an overhaul of your diet or feeling bad about what you're doing, but you just want to start shifting the balance a little bit in the anti-inflammatory direction. And the, the easiest way to do that is adding more nutrient dense fruits and vegetables. Like you don't need supplements. You don't need any, you know, fancy vitamins and minerals, if you're doing this and you're getting enough nutrient dense fruits and vegetables. So I'm talking about rainbow of colors, you know, not just like frozen peas or corn. We want like dark leafy greens, red, orange, purple, yellow variety. And ideally half or even start with a quarter of every plate being vegetables. Like even if it has to be a side salad or something, so if you only do this one thing, you'll feel better. One thing. <laughs> then from there, you want to start just adding more whole foods, like high quality proteins, healthy fats, whole grains, nuts and seeds. And then gradually kind of moving away from things that we all know are inflammatory. So you probably already know. So things like added sugars, um, packaged processed foods, anything that has a lot of added sugar, artificial flavors, refined um, processed carbohydrates. So like your pasta and bread, unfortunately not a health food for most people, um, for anyone I would say, or your fried foods, your fast foods and alcohol. I don't know if I said alcohol yet, but those are probably the top things that you, you just don't wanna overdo. So if you feel like you're overdoing them, just start with adding more good things first, rather than even taking anything away. And you'll gradually start to feel better and you'll crave more good things. So it works like magic. And in my upcoming course in February, we're actually gonna do a much deeper dive into what makes up that anti-inflammatory diet and how to make the transition to one. So it's a, it's a lifestyle more than a diet. Excellent. That's one thing. <laughs> you only do one thing, folks. That's it. That's the end. That's it. No, just kidding. <laughs> We're just joking about it because it is the truth, though. If your food um, choices are intact, meaning that like more often than not, you're picking good foods, the ones that we know are not going to wreak havoc on your hormones and cause you know inflammation in your joints and whatnot, then yeah, you're, you're doing pretty darn good, right? So one of the other things I just want to add to that is how do you know if you're overdoing it? Well, you, you probably, you probably have an idea, but you know, just being aware for throughout the whole day, like if you're not going to keep a, a direct food diary or log or whatever, um, just doing it for three days in a row. And you don't have to like even put the portion size next to it. Just having an idea of, oh, I grabbed that. I grabbed a handful of crackers, handful of pretzels, handful of this. You'll start to see like how often you're eating the excess stuff. So it's not just about like, you know, weight management. It's really a lot about the quality of the foods that you're intaking. And that's your primary medicine is your food. So just 
starting with that and taking you know stock in it and understanding that especially during the holidays we have more challenges so there's forgiveness towards yourself but also the awareness of like well if i'm planning to have you know um cookies over here and all over there then maybe I should choose really wisely on this point and just balancing things out. That's just what this is about. Just balancing things out. We don't want you to sit there and be over in the corner crying. Like, I don't get to have that. <laughs> just be aware. That's all. So the second part we're going to go over, um, the second pillar is movement, regular movement. And this is wild because, um, you know, I've always been a movement oriented person. And then as things get more hectic, I find myself not really just being sedentary, but not being aware of how much movement I'm getting. So, you know, people are counting their steps and stuff like that. I'm not necessarily counting my steps. I'm very aware um, on the days that I don't get enough movement because I can feel it in my body. I can feel like I'm more fatigued. I'm having a harder time starting the process. Even if I've been sitting too long, regardless of age, you'll start to feel like, oh my gosh, it's harder to get up <laughs> or, whatever, I've just been sitting too long. Um, so regular movement, it's very normal to become less active in the winter time. There's more time spent indoors, kind of hibernating, you kind of want to go into that mode, but it's really important to continue getting regular movement daily to maintain overall health. Daily exercise keeps muscles strong, maintains healthy bone density, improves metabolism, supports immune system, boosts lung capacity, promotes circulation of blood and lymph. Did you get all that? Because there's more and more and more. <laughs> if you're not moving, believe me, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's going to help you get better sleep and it helps to prevent the winter blues. So people that are really affected by seasonal disorder, you know, you have to be aware of this. If you're looking for that, that place to calm yourself down in and not be sad, and, you know, just keep moving. Your brain also needs fresh blood flow to function properly. Did you think about that? So if you find yourself getting tired and unfocused after being sedentary and you're staring at a computer all day or you're watching too much TV, um, get up, pace around for 10, uh, you know, 10 to 30 minutes and you'll be amazed at how much this resets your focus. I always say like, I don't like doing jumping jacks, but if you put on a good song, I'll dance for five minutes without a problem, right? So find whatever is the easiest for you. Um, with the kids, I'll joke around and like make them march around or whatever and like just be really goofy. And then suddenly we feel better and we feel more focused. So it's really important to do that. Um, we lost you for a second. You were a nice free yeah. stream. <laughs> I'm here. Okay. Um, so yeah, I just want to bring it back to also what you said about food and exercise. This is all about, you know, we're not here to judge anyone's habits, but it's more about tuning into how you're feeling. Like, how do you feel when you eat that food? How do you feel when you know you're not getting enough movement? And it's just like tuning into those signals. And the next thing that I wanted to talk about, and this is super important for overall health and just immune health is sleep. So it's one of those things that I talk to people about all the time. And once we really delve into it, we find that their sleep, it's like, yeah, oh, I'm getting seven to eight hours a night, but maybe it's not the best quality because you're still waking up super tired or crabby. And it's an indicator that you're just not getting high quality sleep. So this deep restorative sleep is so important for just keeping every system of the body healthy. And if you're not getting that, you're going to feel it because your body needs this time to recharge. It's your period of cleansing and detoxification, regenerating your cells, especially your immune cells. So it's actually restoring your white blood cells and your, you know, all of your immune system. So less sleep essentially leads to deficient immune functions. We don't want to go into winter in that state. And chronic lack of restorative sleep also increases your inflammation and as well as decreasing immune function, making it harder to fight off those infections when you do get, you know, inevitable exposure to something. So ideally you wanna aim for seven to eight hours. I think everyone's different in terms of what they need and what makes them feel good, but seven to eight hours is typical. And one of the big factors that I really hone in on is you want a completely dark room. So you don't want bright lights from clocks or electronics entering the room. And you also want to avoid screens for at least an hour before bed. And I always get that face. <laughs> because that actually signals to your brain that it's daytime. So this is, you know, sending the light in 
right to your pineal gland in the brain. And it's telling that gland to stop releasing melatonin. So it's like your brain thinks it's awake and you're not getting that melatonin release that helps you sleep. And melatonin also has many other benefits. It acts as an antioxidant, reduces inflammation, supports your immune health, hormonal health. I work with a lot of women on fertility and egg quality and melatonin is huge with that for maintaining egg health and hormonal health. So it doesn't mean that everyone has to run out and take melatonin. In fact, I don't even recommend it for everyone because we wanna start with the basics. And sometimes we do a short-term course of it just to reset circadian rhythm, but you know, that's something that you want to talk to your doctor about. You want to start with the basics. So avoiding bright light as opposed to just jumping to a supplement. I like that. You know, as we're talking about, like your body is, is naturally going to do these things for you, but you have to set it up for success. And if we're, you know, and, and I'll speak for myself as well, like my poor sleep habits tend to be, you know, I blame it on my kids or whatnot, because when we were younger, we were looking for like fear of missing out, right? So we'd stay up late and we'd play or party or whatever. Um, and then as adults, especially if you have children, sometimes we stay up later to get either things done or because we're looking for that unwinding process that we couldn't achieve when the kids were up. So I understand that. And what I'll say to you um, folks that are like me that have that you know, time at night that you just wanna keep for yourselves, you know, make sure it's quality time. So set, um, your expectations a little differently, meaning that, you know, I'm not going to get everything done in these cu next couple hours. I'm going to choose, you know, a couple things that I feel really pressing that will make me feel better to finish before bedtime, focus on those, and then make sure you have at least 30 minutes of, um, you know, if you want TV, okay, TV. And then the rest of it should be off the devices and really focusing on having some late night water or tea, obviously non-caffeinated. And, um, you know, meditation, you know, it doesn't have to be full out asana yoga. It just needs to be something for the brain to go, oh, it's time for me to close down the shift and to transition into really my restorative time. Um, and that is preaching to myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that the times that I do this is particularly with my partner, um, we're better. We're just better together. We're better as a team and we're setting up um, ourselves for a better day in the morning. So that's, that's how I feel about sleep. Sleep health is a really, really big thing. And it's, um, it's been going downhill for a lot, especially during pandemic. People are just more stressed out and having a hard time with that. Mm. And this goes into our last pillar, reduce stress. Stress is just, stress is a cyclical bastard of a boy <laughs> or whatever you want to say, like just a not nice friend. Um, and I'm joking about it, but I mean very seriously, because as we talk about stress and what it does, which I'll say it right now, it impairs immune function, increases inflammation, increasing susceptibility to infections. Um, it does so much to us that as we talk about it, it creates more stress. It just makes everything tight and not functioning properly. So let's take that off of your back. You're not going to get rid of stress. Stress isn't going to just go away by you know, saying, well, I'm not going to be stressed out anymore. Don't anybody talk to me. Don't do this. You can't do that. You're not living alone on an island, you know, with um, coconuts being delivered to you and everything's taken care of. That's not what's happening here. Stress comes in all forms. It comes in negative. It comes in positive, however you want to call it. Even good change is stressful. So what can you do? Some basic ways of reducing stress. And we're just going over it so quickly and so minutely right now, but just hear me. When I'm talking about the health of your sleep and I'm talking about, you know, introducing or, or re-energizing meditation before bed, remember meditation doesn't have to look one certain way. There's all different types. Finding out what feels good for you. I'm a Pisces. I like to move because I like water. So at the beginning of my meditation practice, um, I did a lot of uh, Tai Chi, which was more moving, very slow movements. And then adding in deep breathing. Um, finding ways to recenter and refocus our bodies, getting massage, you know, acupuncture, um, anything that feels like you feel rejuvenated afterwards, that's reduction of stress, okay? And then there have these apps you can use all the time, Headspace, Calm, Insight Timer, and there's so many others you can explore, but there's also free meditation on YouTube, mine included. Um, and then lastly, or maybe not lastly, 
but very specifically and very importantly, talking it out with a counselor, with a coach, with a friend. You need to make sure that you have a support system that's not just there for your venting, but also there for your listening and like you're having this coexistence and really holding space for each other. And I can go on about that forever. And the last one that I would say really is simplifying your life. Instead of looking for all these things to bombard yourself with, you know, I invite you to look for ways of simplifying, learn how to say no to things that aren't going to feed you or going to help others, learn how to say yes to connection that will, you know, very easily help fulfill some sort of a spiritual path. And you'll see that that type of simplification is going to reduce your stress. It's going to make you feel more connected and more supported on all fronts. And then that will be a more reciprocal type of relationship to have with yourself and to have with others. So we're just nailing the tip of the iceberg with what you can do and how to do all these things. And we hope that you join us in February. And we have so many upcoming things that we're working on because we wanna be connected to you and we want you to understand that you're not alone in this grand old world and that there are happy things to be considered and we're going to keep you informed and hopefully you'll enjoy it all, right? And with that. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much everyone for watching and we look forward to giving you more support to, and you know helping you be healthy in the new year. And I think as Vanessa said, with stress, it's just so important to not have your stress reduction then become another stressor and think like, oh my God, stress reduction on my to-do list, you know, and it could become all consuming. But it's all about resilience. And that goes for every one of the pillars that we talked about today. It's looking at what you're doing and thinking about minor tweaks to just become more resilient. And that will help you in all areas of your life. So we're, we're here for you and we're excited to talk with you more in the new year. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much and be well. Stay healthy.